Holographic doctors may still be science fiction, but a station in space is a Star Trek prediction that's already become science fact, at least on a limited scale. The Russian Mir space station has been in orbit since 1986. There are now plans for a joint space station with the US, Russia, Japan, and Europe. But while the plans keep changing, the staff of Star Trek have not wasted any time in designing and building their own space station, Deep Space Nine. The scale may seem modest at first, but in science fiction, that's not a real limitation. Deep Space Nine is not even a Federation design. It's a second-hand station built by the Cardassians with ample room for a variety of activities. This is the promenade on Deep Space Nine. Uh, Herman Zimmerman, our production designer, wanted this to be a, an expansive place to show that this is, in fact, an interstellar crossroads. Well, and you can get your exercise. Uh, the crew can walk, mm -hmm. everybody who lives mm -hmm. here. And there. Yes, there's every convenience of home. Here is, for example, a directory. You can theoretically hit this button, and it'll tell you what's what's where and of course if only if you can read Cardassian. A restaurant? This in fact is a symbol of the Bajoran religious faith. Oh. Since we're such a multicultural interstellar society, the uh, Bajoran religious faith is respect, re uh, reflected and respected here. And they have services, I presume, periodically? Reg regularly. A bar on the other side? This is the infamous Quark's Bar where you can play Dabo and do whatever else you want there. This is a place where you can get uh, interstellar sushi. <laughs> mm -hmm. And this looks like a shopping mall of some kind and a directory. This is uh, what Rick Berman calls our Rosetta Stone. This is our, uh, our building directory, but because Earth people are only one part of it, we have the this, this same information in Ferengi, in Vulcan, in Klingon, in Cardassian, and Bajoran. Well, it's all the comforts of home, mm -hmm. indeed. Yeah, so right this way, we have the Ferengi Current Exchange. Is this like uh, an ATM machine? Yeah, it's sort of like an interstellar ATM. Mm -hmm. Since the Ferengi are uh, portrayed as the robber barons of the, of the galaxy, they, <laughs> they would, of course, portray themselves as honest banking at current Ferengi rates. <laughs> but this will allow you to exchange currency between uh, Romulan and uh, Cardassian Ferengi. So if I just put in my cash station card, I should be able to get some currency Only back. if you know your PIN number. Oh, okay. This engineering model of NASA's space station is not as roomy as Deep Space Nine. There's no promenade. Quark's bar would have a little difficulty fitting in. And there is a distinct lack of aliens running around. No, this is for pure scientific research. And here it is, a science section for research and experimentation and a section for crew quarters. It's designed for no frills practicality, as I found with astronaut Bill Shepard. Of course, you don't have to worry about climbing into this thing. You'll just be floating yeah, from one place to another. Right That's hard to get used to. But if we consider the question of how do we live for an extended time in space, this is what we've come up with. Well, you'd need a, a large module like this to accommodate uh, the habitability for the crew. I will have a crew of four, and they're going to be up here normally 90 days. Uh, some experiments that we're looking at will be run over longer periods, so we need a crew to be up here. 180 days, possibly longer. What about this shower? I didn't know you had one on well, the shuttle. Well, it's a new thing. We don't have one on the shuttle, but it's a new thing for a station. And this will be a place where uh, the crew can get in. Uh, we'll have a control volume with some airflow in it. And it'll basically keep the water uh, trapped in the shower and then recycled. And this is how people will stay clean. It's really something we're going to need to do on a regular basis because right now one of the biggest issues with habitability on the shuttle is uh, the inability to, to really get clean every mm -hmm. once in a while, whether that's every other day or so or every week. Or, and so for a prolonged stay in space, we're going to need that and it'll be part of the HAB module here. Bill, you've taken your shower. Is this now where you sleep? All right, this, this is, we're looking at the sleeping bag, uh, which is the bag that we fly right now on the shuttle. Uh, for a while on the station, we won't have this habitation module up, so we'll have to be sleeping either in a bag like this uh, tied to a row of lockers, or there will be accommodations for three in the Russian side of the station over in the Russian segment. Uh, but it's very comfortable, and you just jump in it and zip it up. Bill, does this mean you will always have a room with a view? 
Well, Bill, the HAV module will have uh, two portholes or windows like this, uh, and you'll be able to look out and, and basically see the Earth and see where you are. To get into space and onto a space station, you don't need a starship, you need a shuttle. Star Trek has a whole fleet of them, including one named for Stephen Hawking. Back on Earth, we have NASA's space shuttle, but it's not the only option. Three, two, start. We have ignition. The experimental DCX rocket is a reusable craft made by McDonnell Douglas. At first, you might wonder whether it's science fiction or science fact. Ascent is good. We're in the translation mode. The DCX has not made it to space yet, but it can maneuver in the atmosphere like no other rocket. Landing good aboard. Landing Q limit. Landing high thrust. Acceleration ramp down. Roll up. We got a touchdown. Touchdown. Right on gear. Right on gear. Engine shut down. Engine All right. If the DCX continues to perform well, it'll have some interesting uses. Project director Bill Gobatz. You'll be able to go down to a spaceport, catch a space plane, um, maybe go to a, uh, a hotel in space for, uh, for, for the weekend, for a week. Japan, for example, uh, they have a long-term program. Uh, what are they working towards? A, uh, a hotel in space by around the year 2015. Uh, perhaps a first uh, lunar outpost uh, by around 2020. If we go to space and we colonize space, certainly there will be hotels, there will be restaurants, there will be a Taco Bell. Uh, th there will be places that are familiar to us in this very unfamiliar setting. If there are hotels and maybe casinos, I'll have a wonderful time.